Well, good day, viewers. Today we have a 2016 Chevy Colorado, four-wheel drive, of course, and it's here for a bunch of warning lights on. It's got an ABS light on, traction control light on, stability control message, service stability track, service brake assist. And I scanned it a couple of weeks ago, and I believe there was a problem with one of the speed sensors. So we're going to scan it now again and, and see what codes it's generating. So we've already ID'd the vehicle, uh, pulling up a service record from before. It should auto ID, you probably pull the mileage out of it at the same time. Apologize for the noise, but the furnace is running above me. So we're going to do a network code scan. GM allows you to do a network code scan, key on engine running, which helps kill from, keep from killing the battery while you're doing the scan. Left front wheel speed circuit plausibility failure. Brake booster, pump motor. Hmm, symptom zero zero, that's interesting. C0035. C027B. I think these are two separate problems. Front video display output signal. Invalid data received from electronic brake control. Well, that's secondary. I like how the manufacturers are using communication codes because of invalid data. So, because the ABS system has got a fault, it's affecting the power steering control. Control module power circuit below voltage, low voltage in the radio. Invalid data received from the transfer to buy the transfer case control module from the EBCM. And you can see all the maintenance monitors are running past. So before we clear the codes out, we're going to go into the ABS system and put this truck up in the air and do a visual inspection of the uh, wheel speed sensor wires. I'm wondering if this has got a reluctor failure on one of the hub and bearing assemblies on the left front. So, right front, right rear, left front, left rear. So I got them backwards, but... So the two front wheels, so opposite sides of the scan tool here, but we'll put it up on the hoist and, and spin the tires and have have a look and see if the signal is present now. So I'm watching live data now with the wheel vehicle up in the air and the wheels elevated obviously and I'm going to spin the left front wheel. You can see it, it kind of drops out. I was turning at a consistent speed. I'll spin the right front by comparison. So you can see when I spun the right front wheel, there was a consistent speed. Let's back up and look at this. Oh, yeah, while I was spinning the left front, it was dropping out. So I suspect the reluctor has fallen apart on the wheel bearing. Let's have a look. So you can barely see the reluctor up through there. And it's really difficult to see. I don't know if I'm going to be able to zoom in on it. Not very well. But if I spin the wheel, you know what, I'm going to get the borescope. So I've got the borescope hooked up to this thing, and it's wireless, I'm losing, whoops, to get in here with the camera and have a look. Okay, so now you can see the speed sensor reluctor, and I'm going to turn the wheel.
collector has fallen off. Let's have a look at the new wheel bearing. So there's the SKF part number for the wheel bearing. And here's what it looks like. So this magnetic reluctor, which is part of the seal in here, actually flakes off and a piece will be missing when I take that bearing out. So this thing doesn't need a speed sensor, it needs the wheel bearing itself. So let's have a look at it as we disassemble it. So remove the tire assembly. Had fun with these chrome capped wheel nuts, swollen wheel nuts. They're all split, but the socket still fit on these and this 22 and a half millimeter was still tight going on this one. So I'm gonna peel that chrome off there temporarily, but it needs new wheel nuts. Pull the brake caliper off and support it. I like to use these L hooks from a hardware store. Break, pull the rake, brake rotor off and the axle nut off. These are 18 mil heads on these bolts that hold the caliper assembly on. If you're not doing the brake pads, you can just leave the caliper assembled. This is a fixed caliper like a Toyota. Well, even after heating this, I heated around this and hit it several times. Snil still snapped off my T30 Torx bit with the impact screwdriver. I had another one here that was a T27 and I twisted it. So get that piece of bit out of there and drill the end out of this bolt this thing's fighting me so i drilled off the end of the uh, holding bolt there we don't really need that anyways and i uh, sprayed penetrating fluid on the back of the heads of the nut bolts coming through from the back uh, 35 millimeter nut and washer come off tap the axle shaft in now the wheel speed sensor is down inside here you can see it uh, I don't want to try to remove it because likely it'll break off if I try to remove it. But you got to be conscious that when you try to pull this axle out in this direction, you're going to pull the axle shaft towards that uh, speed sensor and you might break it. So you got to keep the axle inboard while you're removing it. These two, these four bolts that hold the wheel bearing in have 13 millimeter heads. So we use a 3 inch extension and 3 8 long handled ratchet to remove them. So we'll get them off. So I found it necessary to use this puller to push the axle shaft in because the the CV joint housing is too fat to allow that bolt to come out with a socket on it. So you'll get about halfway out and then the socket starts to hit here and pushes up against the, if you're not careful, it'll push the boot off. So I've got, you can't even get the bolts out. Maybe once the bearing is loose, you'll be able to get the bolts out. But I got three of them out and I had to work them back and forth half a dozen times. Like I said, this thing is fighting me. So there's a better look at that failed wheel bearing. You can see the magnetic reluctor is missing two thirds of the way around here. And like I said, it just flakes off like this. That's a poor, poor design. Once that flakes off, there's no reluctor to trigger the, the sensor. You can see the sensor sticking down through, through here. And that's what I said, you have to be conscious that not to pull out on this axle shaft, you'll break that sensor off. So when we're gonna clean this bore out and clean the surface off, clean the backing plate and put it back together again with a new wheel bearing. So there's the steering knuckle prepped. I cleaned the inside of the bore with a roll lock sanding disc and the surface uh, red Loctite on the bolts. 96 foot pounds for these four bolts. I got a look up the torque for the axle nuts probably around 175 to 225 somewhere in that area so we're ready to reassemble again being cautious not to uh, pull the axle out because you might break that speed sensor like I said that speed sensor lives right in there and I don't want to try to remove it because it'll probably break off in this knuckle it might come out but you can work around it you can see it up there so let's put the axle hub bearing in so the torque on this axle nut is 190 foot-pounds, 192. If you put a uh, bar in here, you can hold it between the ribs. And I put Loctite on the nut. Service instructions say you're not supposed to reuse that nut, but I don't have a new one, so we're gonna use it over. So I've got to back together. I just have to let it down and torque the wheel nuts, but uh, I got the wheel back on, the brakes back together again. Let's have a look at the left front speed sensor now when I spin it at a constant speed. Starting now.
as you can see it's uh, working just fine now so I'm sure that was a problem now we have to investigate the other code the uh, C027 R or whatever it was C027R let's see what the codes were it's 27B sorry C027B uh, so we'll have a look I'm gonna clear these codes and see what sets the C027B code. So the C027B code is not a common code. There's no cases on it. So let's see what the troubleshooting suggests. Brake booster electric vacuum pump problem. The brake booster vacuum sensor measures vacuum in the brake booster assembly. The electronic brake control module supplies 5 volt reference and a low reference circuit to the brake vacuum sensor. The sensor supplies a voltage signal in relation to the pressure in the brake booster to the electronic brake control module within the vacuum. When the vacuum within the system becomes weak, the electronic brake control module turns on the brake booster pump motor by providing battery voltage to the brake booster pump motor relay. The relay activates the supply of battery voltage to the brake booster pump. So it's got an assist vacuum pump. Conditions for setting an open or short to voltage is detected on the relay control circuit. So this is not a, a vacuum leak per se. This is an electrical malfunction. Action taken when the DTC sets. Stored in memory. Hmm. Well, I'm going to do a little reading here. Well, the interesting thing says the condition for setting the DTC is an open or short the voltage on the relay control circuit. But then when you go down to the system verification, it says verify the brake booster vacuum system has no damage, leakage, or incorrect installation. Hmm. Ignition off and all vehicle systems off. Disconnect the harness connector at the KR14 brake booster pump motor relay. It may take up to two minutes for all vehicle systems to power down. Ignition off and all vehicle system off. With less than test for less than 10 ohms between the ground circuit. Why are they qualifying the ground like this? This is just stupid. Test for less than two ohms on the ground circuit end to end. Wow. Let's have a look at the electrical circuit. So here's the electrical circuit. It uses a three-wire brake booster vacuum sensor, and that's an input to the electronic brake control module. The electronic brake control module supplies power to a relay, to the control side of a relay, and that relay sends power from a 30-amp fuse to the brake booster pump motor. So according to the, the troublemaker chart, the fault sets when there's a problem with the control circuit. So it goes through a couple of connectors on the way from the brake booster module. It goes through X106 and X102 and then to the fuse block. Uh, I wonder if we can command it on with the scan tool. Let's have a look at that. Let's go into functional test. Output controls. Brake booster electric vacuum pump. Why not try commanding it on? If it doesn't run, we have got a problem. I didn't hear anything run, but I heard a ding, ding, ding on the dash. Let's see if uh, if it sets the code, if it reset the code. Because I had cleared the codes. No, it did not. Well, let's try this again. Functional test. Output controls. Brake booster electric pump. There it is, off. I wonder if there's a data parameter for a brake booster vacuum. Brake fluid level. Brake booster vacuum supply voltage, 5 volts. So the 5 volt reference is there. Brake pressure sensor voltage. Now is that the one or is that the brake hydraulic circuit? Brake pedal position sensor. Brake booster vacuum, PSI. 7.5. PSI. Let's try running it. I hear a relay turn on, but I don't hear anything running. I can hear a relay turn on. Well, let's find that relay. 
So K13 here, this one right here, is the brake booster vacuum pump relay, which is this big gray one here. So I removed it to inspect it, and it has some heavy duty terminals on it, so that's like a 50 to 70 amp relay. Um, I wanted to check for power on the two pin, one of the two pins, 30 or 87, but my test light won't reach in there. So I, I opted for a relay switch. And I'll answer the phone. So I, as I was saying before the phone rang, I installed this relay switch in here. And if I turn this on, it should make the vacuum pump run wherever that lives. And it doesn't do anything. So we need to check for power on here and figure out which one of these maxi fuses is the fuse in question. So I have no power on these, either of these pins, 30 or 87 here, at least as far as I can tell. And it comes from this 30 amp fuse. These uh, fuses here are got covers over them, so you can't really test them properly. Let's say pry this cover off. Let's pull it out. It looks like it's blown. Yeah, it appears to be blown. I can't get the cover off of it. There we go. Let's just stick it back in there temporarily. And try for power on this side and this side. So the fuse is blown for sure. I suspect that the vacuum pump is shorted. We'll get a new fuse and see which what happens. So I put a new fuse in there, and now pin 87 on the relay has power. I predict when I put this switch in here and turn it on, it's going to blow that fuse. But we'll find out. Oh, it doesn't run. And we do have power on pin 87 now. I need a terminal to go in there. You can see so let's find out where that pump motor lives so I've got the relay commanded on and you can hear it click on when I push in the relay so the control circuit is working fine again we have to find out where that pump motor lives because it's not running So the brake vacuum pump, booster pump, lives down here on the right front of the engine. So that's it there. So we're going to unplug this connector here and uh, put a test light across the connector, a headlight across it, and see if it'll turn the headlight on. So I've got a headlight connected across the two terminals using both the power and ground. And I'm going to turn the toggle switch on and as you can see it lights it up properly when one of those relays is quite warm in there let's put the factory relay back in and use the scan tool to command it on and see if it powers up that relay or the powers up the light that vacuum pump has failed so I'm going to use the scan tool now to command that relay on. And as you can see, it turns the headlight on just fine. So that pump has failed. I'm going to plug it back in. I suspect it, it shorted out and blew the fuse. Take the two wires off their connector here. Plug it back in again and try and command it on. And it commands on, but it doesn't run. So we're going to order up a vacuum pump for this thing. It doesn't look like it's that difficult to replace. 
but it's probably a dealer item only. Just got off the phone with the dealer here in town, uh, none in Canada, uh, $320 retail, got to come from the US, no dealers in Canada have any in stock. Uh, I'm going to command this pump on using the uh, scan tool and go tap on it and see if it'll make it work. But it uh, looks like it'll be a week to 10 days to get it. So we'll we'll see if we can source a new one or or what the customer wants to do. Well, I just wanted to follow up to see if there was any kind of vacuum leak in this thing. Uh, so I started the engine and I've got 8.2 PSI in the booster and I'm going to shut it off and see how it holds vacuum. So we'll let it sit for a few minutes and see if it holds vacuum in case there's a vacuum leak in the booster and that's forcing the vacuum pump to run more often than it needs to. But it appears to be holding vacuum we'll pick up after a few minutes here. Well it's been 15 minutes and it's holding at 8.5 psi. This is absolute pressure not uh, gauge pressure obviously. Uh, so I don't think there's any leak in the booster. I think that pump has just failed because, because it's, it is what it is. So that's it for now. We're gonna order some parts. I did end up ordering that part off of Rock Auto because it has to come out of the States anyways. And it was like, uh, it was about 50 bucks cheaper than buying it locally, but I'd get it faster from Rock Auto than I would through the local dealer. Thanks for watching.